Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we are committed to maintaining our independence from the encroachment of expansionist foreign powers. Damn. Uh, you know this clip has been making the rounds in lieu of Europe's energy crisis, but brace yourself here, people. I'm going to say something truly shocking, but Trump is wrong. I know, right? It's terrifying, but do feel free to tell me if I am mistaken. But anyway, the reason for my say-so requires a short history lesson for you all. If we go back all the way to the end of the Second World War, after the fall of the Third Reich, America's ideological foes shifted from fascism to communism. And so America instituted the Marshall Plan in Germany, which was to protect the westernized part of the country against the influence of the Soviet Union. NATO was born during this period to protect Europe from the threat of the Soviet Union. Now, when the Soviet Union disbanded, do you think the imperial Yanks would just dissipate and give up all of their control over Europe? No, <laughs> would they fuck? Fast forward to today, check this one out. Germany's strategic importance for the US is reflected by the location of US European Command Headquarters in the southwestern city of Stuttgart, for which it serves as the coordinating structure for all American military forces across 51 primarily European countries. The mission of EUCOM is to protect and defend the US by deterring conflicts, supporting partnerships such as NATO and countering transnational threats. At its command are the US Army Europe and the US Air Forces in Europe and the US Marine Corps Forces Europe and Africa, all of which have installations in Germany. In fact, Germany hosts the largest portion of US troops in Europe, roughly 38,600, though the number of various troops are regularly rotated to other countries. This is also more military personnel than the US keeps in any other country except Japan. In West Germany, the occupation was regulated by the Occupation Statute, signed in April 1949, when the country was founded. The statute allowed France, the UK and the US to keep occupational forces in the country and maintain complete control over West Germany's disarmament and demilitarization. When the military occupation of West Germany officially ended, the country regained control of its own defense policy. However, the occupational statute was succeeded by another agreement with its NATO partners. This deal, known as the Convention on the Presence of Foreign Forces in the Federal Republic of Germany, was signed in 1954 by West Germany. It allowed eight NATO members, including the US, to have a permanent military presence in Germany. The treaty still regulates the terms and conditions of the NATO troops stationed in Germany today. Remember what I said before a while ago, that any nation needs a number of things, two of which is defense and energy. And if you outsource these things to other nations, you are weakened for it. And whoever provides you with that has power over you. NATO is not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. No, no, no. NATO is the North American's tentacle organization. NATO is not there to protect jack shit. NATO is there to serve as the imperialistic arm of the liberal world order via military oppression. It is to serve the military industrial complex as well as a money laundering scheme for the corrupt politicians to line their freaking pockets. This is why Germany and Western Europe, when Russia invaded Ukraine, instead of saying fuck off you insane Yankee gits, we're not going to commit economic suicide, decided to get on their bony ass weak knees and suck off Uncle Sam. Because American troops are on their damn territories. They are being manipulated by Washington. Europe is not free. It is being held hostage by American occupational forces disguised as freaking NATO. This is all just a play for influence. America does not give a damn about inducing economic suffering in their own country or using the Ukrainian people as cannon fodder for a proxy war against Russia. They are there to appease the furnace of the military industrial complex and to weaken Russia. Why? Who the hell knows? Probably because the majority of Congress are all old as fuck and still harbor Cold War mentalities, harkening back to the times where they didn't all look like expired dried fruit. No one in the mainstream media dared to ask what the fuck is America doing in Ukraine? 
Why in the hell is America pumping billions of dollars into this insanely corrupt country all in the name of protecting democracy against the threat of Putin's autocracy? Meanwhile, Zelensky suspended democracy and banned dissenting voices and parties the moment he saw fit to do so, becoming just as autocratic as the foe they're supposedly battling. Turns out democracy is piss weak. You need to suspend it in order to save it. Who'd have thought? The real reason for all of this is because many in Washington see this as an ideological battle and a potential swan song for the American regime, the death of the liberal world order. And America greatly fears the old nation states of Europe growing a pair of balls and purging out of the stench of Uncle Sam's moldy ass top hat. Why do you think the Americans sanction Nord Stream 2? It bypasses Ukraine and goes directly to Germany and other European nations. America would hate this because again, they would lose influence in Europe. Anyone who pays attention to this knows this is America's fault. It is why the machine tries so hard to stop anyone from trying to learn the history or point to America's hand in all of this damn mess, and why anyone who does not go along with this pathetic narrative is called a Russian stooge or puppet. And the thing is, if you do know what's going on, and you know the history and you're not some partisan gimp, and you will actually be objective, Russia looks amazing. Russia has for years said, do not expand NATO. We consider this a threat to our sovereignty. And the arrogant Americans dismissed them and just did it anyway. All of Russia's actions have been in response to these expansions. Why the hell did America expand NATO twice since the spanning of the Soviet Union? Why the hell did it overthrow the democratically elected Yanukovych government? Why the hell has it continuously funneled weapons to a country bordering Russia? What is in their interest? What is in Russia's interest? They want to sell their resources to those who want to buy. And for this unspeakable act of trade that happens to rival a bunch of fat-ass yanks, they've earned the ire of the Western world. But it's not all it's cracked up to be. The ruble has not only stabilized, it's increased in strength prior to what it was before the invasion. And solidarity amongst the Europeans is starting to fracture, as once again, winter looks to be coming to the aid of Russia. And as Italy Salvini has pointed out, the energy sanctions are crippling Europe's economies with exorbitant energy prices. Meanwhile, Russia's federation machine is raking in fat stacks of cash. France, meanwhile, is also restarting all of its nuclear facilities in the wake of the self-inflicted energy crisis to cope with the coming winter, which all points to the obvious fucking conclusion everyone is scared to utter. The damn sanctions on Russia have proven to be a gamble of disastrous proportions. And so we must ask, what the hell do the European people get with its governments and the Americans throwing petrol on this fucking fire? To quote Frederick Bastiat, apparently, when goods don't cross borders, soldiers will. And that is all for today, and I will see you all next time.